This is episode 260 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. And now a word from our sponsor, Control and Compound. Here's how infinite banking works in under 60 seconds. You have to save your money somewhere. Well, we think the best place to save it is inside a cash value life insurance policy. You save some money in there, it grows tax-free for the rest of your life. Then an opportunity or emergency comes comes along. Let's say a few years down the road, you can buy a business, buy a property, buy an income-producing asset. You leverage the infinite banking policy, borrow against your asset, take advantage of the opportunity. But your money still stays in the infinite banking policy. You're not borrowing your money. You're borrowing the insurance company's money. So your money's in the policy, it's in the opportunity, and it's providing a death benefit. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You get to retirement, you have this massive cash value life insurance. Leverage that tax-free, and you don't repay those loans. You sit on the beach and you spend that money tax-free every month. It doesn't show up on a tax return, and you leave your family a huge tax-free death benefit. For more information, visit www.controllingcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines. Welcome back to the show. Today, I've got George L. Mastery back on after, it's been a couple of years. George is a very humble investor. He's a guy that uh, produces a lot of content himself, and uh, he's got big ambitions, and he follows through on his plan. And uh, today, we talked about a couple of bigger projects that he's working on, uh, things he's doing to just get in and uh, get moving. So he's working on an 11 unit building that he's converting into a 13 unit building in Brantford. Uh, he talks all about his uh, issues with landlord tenant board and how he's proceeding in Ontario and uh, he's not letting it get to him. He's not being emotional about it. He's systematically working through his problems and his challenges and still finding a way to profit as an investor. He also talked about a, uh, a four units or a four townhouse project that he has in Welland, Ontario that he's converting into eight units, um, how the numbers are going to work on that. So it was a it was a nice episode to just talk about somebody who's making it happen in Ontario, irrespective of all the noise, irrespective of, you know, a lot of people who have a sentiment about Ontario that they're not they're not big on it. Um, that's not getting to George. He's uh, he's progressing and he's finding a way to make it work and make it cash flow. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about real estate investing and you're kind of new to all of this, I would highly recommend going back to like the first 10 to 20 episodes and just work your way through there because we actually went through a lot of the fundamentals back then. And then come on back up to modern episodes and uh, keep following along. I think you're going to find a lot of value out of that if you're not, you know, if you're not following with some of the stuff we discuss in this show, because I do assume a certain level of understanding uh, that's been a natural progression with this podcast. Uh, so like I said, if something's not clicking for you, I think if you do that, you'll find a, a big benefit. Uh, but if you're al already following along, uh, more than happy to have you here. And thank you for being a loyal listener and viewer. Um, if you could please take a moment and share this episode, if you're enjoying this podcast, the best thing you can do to help it grow is just share it with somebody uh, that you think it could help. And it also would help a lot if you rated it and reviewed it five stars on whatever platform you're watching or listening on. And uh, of course, YouTube, you know, show me some love there. I'd really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's jump on in to episode 260 with George L. Mastery. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I've got George L. Mastery on the show again. It's been a while. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah, thanks for coming over. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So you've got your own podcast, right? You film out of Oakville? Uh, so my office is in Vaughn now. I used to film in Oakville. Oh, okay. I, I moved over to Vaughn. Oh, okay. So you had a bit of a drive today then? or? Uh, so I was in Welland actually earlier. And I gotcha. just thought on the way back and just pop in. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Well, that worked out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, tell me, tell me what's new. I don't even remember. We talked about some of your Niagara region yeah. investments and you were doing some creative stuff and getting some good refis. Yeah. If I recall. That, so this was a long time ago. This yeah. was like my first multi, I think. Like, yeah. It was, it was a like a fiveplex. Yeah. I remember five that. Yeah. And we ran the numbers on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, lots changed since then, but the latest projects. Um, so I've got a, an 11 unit in Brantford mm -hmm. that we acquired in September of this uh, 2023. And then I'm um, working on four townhomes in Welland that we're converting to duplexes. So okay. yeah, we bought these in 2022. Um, had to go through a whole process because there were tenants in it. And um, yeah. Is this one block of townhomes? Yeah. They're all connected. Uh, like just, just four, four units that are all connected. Yeah. 
Interesting. I looked at a project just like that in Welland many, many years ago and didn't pull the trigger, but I was thinking it could be worth millions Yeah. if you, if you just duplex it. But this was before that was as common, the mm -hmm. duplexing. Um, okay. Interesting. So tell me, is that a recent one? So that was purchased in 2022. So okay, yeah. this was, we literally closed in March. So for those that remember, that's exactly when the rates started going up yeah. pretty much, right? So your stress level went up as well. Well, I, so th one of the main reasons I bought it was because we got a VTB on it. So on all four, okay, um, one percent interest only. One one percent interest only. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, so so that would offset, uh, you know, paying more for the property if you had to. And what yeah. was it like? Was it eighty percent, ninety percent loan to value? It was. Um, I think it ended up being like seventy three percent, something like that. Okay. So it was a hundred grand down purchase yeah. price. So three was three seventy five. 375 per, per unit per unit okay yeah. so they're all they all have individual titles um, yeah. i can sell them off individually but i can also get a commercial mortgage across all four of them yeah. once they're converted so Which i have great. flexibility do you own them in different names so they don't merge yeah, yeah so I, I have two corps yeah um, and you went every other yeah yeah exactly wise thinking yeah yeah. So if you talk to a lawyer, they'll always tell you that because I, I don't know exactly how it works, but you'll have to like go through planning to resever if that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the, the process, but I, I think yeah. there's like fees involved and. Yeah. Yes. Don't, don't do it. Yeah. Don't buy two side by side. Well, unless you want to, because I've heard unless of somebody want yeah. wanting to do that because they wanted to develop. Yeah. So they were hoping that, that they would all but, merge. But for some reason on their purchase, they, it wasn't going to merge. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. But, okay. Yeah. So is, any deals after that one or that's the most recent? Well, that was 2022. Yeah, um, yeah there's been other uh, other ones for sure. There was uh, Triplex in Hamilton. Um, sold a couple of properties, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the first property I ever bought, I sold it a couple months ago to kind of make room for the, the apartment yeah. building that we bought. So, uh, but at this point, it's just the, uh, I'm just really focusing on these townhomes and the 11 unit building because there's okay. a lot of work on that one too. Yeah, the 11 unit building. Tell me about that one. Uh, yeah, so that was an interesting one because they already had a permit for a 12th unit. Yeah. So they, they had an old laundry room okay. and they had plans to uh, do an addition. So it was like a maybe 300 square foot laundry room, maybe even less. And then mm -hmm. they wanted to add about 150 square feet to it. Mm -hmm. It had a flat roof. So they, I, I looked into it, it was going to cost maybe around 150 to 200K to do everything. We had to build mm -hmm. a retaining wall at the back because there's a huge hill. Okay. Um, so instead, I wanted to see through Ken Beacon Dam, who I was, I'm working with on this, uh, if we can just work within the existing space. So no okay. addition. Let's yeah, just, no addition. I don't care if it's a small unit, but if I can yeah. avoid building a retaining wall, doing all that stuff. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I do the same. Yeah. Um, so he's saying that it meets code. We're applying for a variance, a minor variance for the unit size. Okay. And uh, hopefully it goes through. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah. I, I would think because you don't want to get into uh, the addition if you don't have to. Exactly. Yeah. Because your, your return on your dollar spending going to be there. I'm going to get, yeah. I don't know, I'm assuming maybe an extra hundred a month, maybe because it's a small unit, maybe 150. It might make sense. Like if you if you'll get the cap rate, I, I didn't actually, I think it did. You're run just the like numbers. the cap rate on the additional unit. Um, did, did I look at it? No. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Looking at the cap rate on that? No, the, the extra uh, income that I would generate if I had a slightly larger unit. Yeah. Let's say if it was, if it was an extra hundred a month. Oh yeah. If yeah. it would make sense financially, but oh, I no, think that's I, not going to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would. Not yeah. for the extra hundred K or hundred. And plus with whatever. small units now, like the tech is there, like you can, there's things you can do to just make them better. Like, yeah. um, what do they call it? Sustainable living where you have a shelf that folds out into a desk mm -hmm. and, you know, bed that goes up into the ceiling, yeah. you know, all that kind of thing just kind of makes, you know, makes it a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. a little more flexible. Yeah. And, th yeah. and that's the thing now, like, I think at this point, maybe a couple of years ago, it was all new and exciting for me. So I wanted to have the nicest finishes. I wanted to everything to be perfect. And at this point, I don't really want that anymore. I just want to try to see what makes the most sense financially. Yeah. And if I, don't have the prettiest uh, countertops and mm -hmm. whatever. Like I, yeah. I don't care as much anymore. Oh yeah, you don't need it. I mean, it, the only reason I would say do it is is because you might attract a better tenant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if, if you can attract a marginally better tenant, I mean, in today's day and age, that seems very important. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, why don't we go through some of these numbers? Because it'd be cool. Yeah, cool to hear. Uh, so when did you buy that one? Did you say? 
Uh, the the eleven unit we closed in September of twenty twenty three. Okay. And yeah, I'm gonna just pop this sheet open and we'll yeah, run sure. through these numbers. And you're you have not refied it yet. No, you're just in the middle. No, we got a VTV on that too, actually. Nice. Yeah. And who's we? Are you doing it with a business partner? Or? Yeah, I have a business partner. Um, just one partner on this one. Okay. So purchase of the eleven unit was how much? Two million. Two million. And what's the partner relationship? Is like one responsible for funding everything and um not exactly there's there's a mix like we're both kind of funding it but mm -hmm. sort of proportionately mm -hmm. uh but i'm pretty much taking care of everything all mm -hmm. i'm the active investor on this okay yeah okay so what do you figure you're going to spend on like carrying and rental well i guess you have some units rented while you're working on it yeah so we actually part of this we got three vacant units on closing okay and we have one that's going through an eviction so we're we're just kind of dealing with the hearing and that sort of thing. Um, so we might get another one. Um, but yeah, that, that's so three vacant. You might you're working on a fourth. Yeah. But the others is, is it cash flowing in the current state? Uh, with the VTB, yes. Okay. And we actually did negotiate deals with three additional tenants. So we we we've agreed on an incentive for them to leave. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much are you looking at for all that? Um, like it's going to be around twenty k. Let's say. 20k in total for incentives yeah, yeah that's better than you know 10k a unit or anything yeah i mean it depends on the situation but i, I think mm -hmm. like the living situation for some of the tenants wasn't great because there there is yeah. a there was a i mean cockroach problem it still exists but it's getting better um yeah. some of the tenants had like uh roaches in their couches and that sort of thing so they understood that we're trying to improve the yeah. building and we want to address these issues. So that was kind of why they like agreed. Like they had to go. Yeah. yeah. And and I want them to have a better life. I don't want them to sit on the couch and be uh, attacked yeah. by roaches. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it really that bad? In some of the units, yes. Some of the units yeah. are okay if they're if they're taking care of, like if they if they have stuff piled everywhere. Yeah, in the yeah, units, you're gonna get them. Yeah. 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 In uh, in Florida, we noticed them like they're just more common. And yeah. uh, you'll open a drawer, big fat cockroach, close the drawer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's no, not fun. So, what do you figure you're going to spend? So, you're going to be like twenty grand on incentives. Are you, are you renovating? Do you have a budget per unit that you're doing? Like ten grand, twenty grand a unit. Uh, the units are actually not bad. So they don't really need much. Like I, I will be spending. I'd say so. The one of them we renovated. I think we spent about twelve grand on it. Okay. Um, th there is another one right now that we're going to be renovating. I'd say that one's probably going to be like seventy five hundred, in okay. that in that ballpark. So as a budget uh, on average, do you figure you'll spend seventy five hundred over the next say couple 10, of years? Ten k per, per unit. Per unit. Yeah. Plus the incentives. So you're like one hundred and forty. You're planning on spending in total, um, including the incentives. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what happens with where. So that's another thing. We're building a thirteenth unit as well. Oh, you're gonna actually going to physically build. Yeah. So we have a storage room. Oh, is that the um, one you're not getting the minor variants on? Or you no, are that, minor that was a laundry room. So on yeah. one end of the building, there's a okay. laundry room. On okay. the other end, there's a storage room on okay, the outside so. of the building, but it has like a concrete block foundation and a brick exterior. So okay. um, Ken suggested putting a second story on it to turn it into like a little loft. Nice. So uh, we're, we're looking into that. I think that's going to cost about 150 to build. Okay. So, yeah. so we're like getting close to 300 grand that you're probably... Probably in that ballpark, yeah. Plus the renovation of the... The storage room or the laundry room? The laundry room isn't going to be much because there's already a, a bathroom in it. It yeah. was rented at one point, just not legally. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there is a kitchen already. So it's I'd say it's going to be like a 25 grand reno. Okay, so we're like, I'm going to put like 315. Yeah, in. sure. And I'm not going to put any carrying costs because you're pretty much probably breaking even with what's already there. Like that's all, yeah. that's actually a great way of doing that. So you're probably all in for 2.3, just over. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have 13 units when you're done. 13 units, yeah. And what do you figure like your average rent will be once you kind of get all that done, the the touch-ups done, the turnovers done? Yeah, I, I'd say, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but maybe without my numbers, because I have everything in the spreadsheet, but I didn't bring it. I'd say it's probably going to be around like 1,500 a unit. 1,500 a unit when you're done? Yeah, because there is okay. a, a mix of five two-bedroom units, six one-bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds low, but I mean, I guess it's Brantford. So it's going to be a little lower in Brantford. It's, I, I'm, I'm factoring in like some of the, um, legacy tenants. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so some aren't going to turn over, which is, yeah. So if you do 1500 on average, then you're going to be 19,500 across mm -hmm. the building, which is, it sounds great. Um, do you know ballpark what your taxes are there? Uh, I think they're around like 10 grand a year. 10 grand. Okay. Yeah. They might go up a little. I'll put 12. Yeah. 
once you're done. And then insurance, you're probably like, what, like seven grand on a place like that? Six grand? I think we're at, we're looking at like 450 a month right now. So yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. 450 times 12, 5,400. Okay. I'll yeah. just put 55. Um, maintenance. Um, I just generally have 5% to cover life cycle and, you know, this and that, mm -hmm. things that happen in the building. Does that cover it? That's, that's 11 grand a year. 11. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Utilities. Are you, you're probably paying for central water or central heat? Um, no. So that, that's actually a really nice thing. Every unit has its own water, hot water tank. Okay. But, um, but not its own water meter. No, but we can. So okay. we're in the process of through the city of Brantford. Um, Adding getting, meters? Yeah. Potentially. So everyone so will pay their own water. At some point. Not oh, yet. That'd be but, cool. Yeah. Um, but I, basically right now we're paying for uh, water for the most part and some units still have gas, but most of them are just using electric baseboard heaters. Electric baseboard. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That explains a little, little bit for the lower rent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And the tenants pay their own hydro for the most part. You could, you could probably optimize and get more by putting in heat pumps. If I, if I want to like do, um, you're talking about if for CMHC, that sort of thing, not even like just for like the tenants and what they're willing to pay for rent. If mm -hmm. they see baseboard, every tenant knows, Oh, that's going to cost me. Mm -hmm. But if you sh you say, Hey, we have a super high efficiency, uh, heat pump. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that operates and then they, they're good up until like minus like 35, mm -hmm. some of them. Yeah. Um, well, some of the tenants say that they don't even turn on their heat because like if they're in the middle of the building, yeah, um, they have enough residual heat from other... From, from their other, neighbors? Yeah. So <laughs> They're leeching off their neighbors. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. but I don't think the, the, the cost is going to be as high. And I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm. I, it's all optics, I'm saying. Yeah. Like whether yeah. it is or isn't is actually not even relevant. It's like, yeah. it's the perception. But I mean, I guess you could say, hey, like here's what the tenant last year paid. If you had the record, you know, here's what it cost them. Mm -hmm. Then they'd probably feel some comfort from that. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I think if if I'm going to go with the MLI Select program, it would make a lot of sense to do something like yeah, that as well. Sure. So there'd be additional benefits. So it's something to consider, but... Yeah, especially we'll uh, do the audit beforehand because yeah. there's a certain like credit for improvements, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So utilities wise, you're basically right now you're paying, what is it? Just, just water then? So I'm paying for a bunch of hot water tank rentals. Okay. Um, so that, and those are what, like 25 a month or something? Yeah. Somewhere in that ballpark. So I think I'm paying for five of them right now. Okay. And then you're also paying, um, water consumption for the building. Water, water consumption, which is about 200 a month. Okay. All right. And, and that's probably going to go up a little bit cause we're, uh, we're putting in laundry units. So there's no laundry yeah. in the entire building at all. Like no, you have not, a laundry not, room you're converting. So, oh, are they going in, in the actual units? So the, no, the, the laundry room was like decommissioned a while ago and okay. they just never had, they had laundry no, units. no location so for it. They had to go somewhere to, uh, to get their laundry done. So we, uh, we put it in the hallway. So we're, we're in the process of finishing that up. So our water consumption is going to go up. Our hydro bill is going to go up a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I hadn't gotten to your, 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 um, uh, electric consumption yeah yeah so what is uh what is that right now um i think i mean i i forget off the top of my head but i think it's not much like maybe 70 bucks a, a month because you just have one common meter just the yeah just the hallway like the lights in the hallway that sort of thing that makes sense yeah, yeah it'd be it'd be relatively low but yeah. that so you're saying it's going to go up so we'll probably a little bit so yeah. we'll add just for laundry we'll add like what 200 bucks a month just between electrical and, and water probably yeah yeah and, th and that's going to obviously come back f through the income. Oh, you're going to make wanders. money from it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's going to be coin operated? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll actually just not even count it. We'll just yeah. we'll just exclude that for now because you're going to make money. For from sure. That. I wouldn't yeah. just put units in there for, for anyone to I, use. I mean, right I would be thinking like what's going to get me the tenant I want. But mm -hmm. I like – I. I realize that there's um, downfalls to the way I think about that and I over improving things, wasting time and money, yeah. you know, and I don't want to do any of but that. But it's also like, I've heard of people saying that their tenants invite their friends over to do the laundry if it's free. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And especially knowing your tenant demographic is yeah. important for that. Yeah. Hey, come, we've got laundry machines here. Let's, uh, let's all do our laundry on Saturdays or whatever. Dude, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. So let's just see here. So I've got a management line in here. Uh, do you guys pay a manager? Right now I'm managing it. At some okay. point I will offload it, but, um, just, just until we stabilize where I'm doing it. Okay. So right now you're managing. Yeah. So I'm going to leave a 5% in there. It probably yeah, wouldn't sure. be a whole 5% because your volume there, you'd probably, maybe you could get it a little uh, lower. I'd say 5% is probably pretty fair. Yeah. 
Okay, so landscaping and snow. That's about 500 a month. For everything, okay. So, yeah. so six grand a year across yeah. those two? Okay. Well, I mean, that's what I'm paying for snow right now. I haven't signed a landscaping contract yet, but let's just assume it's the same. Okay. Is it a big property, a lot of grass? Um, Not a ton of grass, but there is a lot of... I mean, there there is quite a bit, actually. Okay. There is enough. Yeah. Okay. And you are going to be all in. So I'm just doing up these numbers. So you're going to be all in around 2.3 million when it does that. So that's like a, once you're done, kind of like a 7.9 cap on what you're in for. Okay. Which sounds good for today's standards because people are still getting, you know, lower caps than that on the market. Mm -hmm. Um and you're thinking MLS Select potentially or CMHC potentially? CMHC is probably yeah. where we're going. But unfortunately, yeah. because we have a VTB, we're not able to go directly into CMHC because they're not taking any like private funds. So They we won't have refinance to, out private funds? No. So we're going to have yeah. to go conventional for two years minimum uh, and then go to CMHC. So like a bridge. Yeah. But you can, I, I know the lenders are going to adapt to this and they're just going to say, okay, we do a CMHC bridge bridge program. I don't know. Like, I know that there's been a lot of pushback from mortgage brokers on this end mm -hmm. because a lot yeah. of people are kind of stuck. Like, they have either VTBs or private financing mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens. But, yeah. Are you, like, is your plan going to be to go back at the, so you're in for 2.3? Like, are you going to try and get an appraisal at, like, 2.8 or something like that? Well, I think that's what the building's going to be valued at when we add 2.8. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. I mean, that that those were the numbers that I had calculated um, when I was okay. doing the original underwriting. Okay, and at two point yeah. eight, you'd be that'd be a six point five cap. So seventy five percent would be uh, two point one million mortgage. So you, you would have something into the deal. Uh, so at a twenty five year AM, it's a forty year AM with CMHC. Right. So, so you want to just calculate it as of when you get to CMHC then? Because then you're, you're not going to be at 75%. You're going to be more like an 80% or 85 Probably in that ballpark. Yeah. Um, okay. So then yeah. we'll go 40 your AM with CMHC and you're probably going to get like more like a five based on today's or Somewhere, even 4.5. Yeah. Like right now there's they're stuff trading under Yeah. where they're, they are giving mortgages under 5%, I've heard. So. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think I'm, I'm doing one right now. Refi, I think it's at like 5.14 or something like that through CMHC. Oh yeah. So that's that's where I'm at right now, but who knows what happens. Well they in a couple float months. until until it closes and also yeah. I guess it depends on MLI select and where yeah. in the program yeah, you exactly. are. So exactly. we can we can just go with five. Uh, no yeah. no sense in being silly. Uh okay, so I got forty four hundred dollars a month in cash flow. Yeah. That'd be pretty sweet cool. when you get there. Yeah. It's I a mean, lot of work to get there though. It's, it's a lot like of work that just goes it's, like that. There's a lot yeah. going on in the building. Yeah. Like um we've had people call the Ministry of Labor. We've had all sorts of things like some of the tenants aren't aren't too happy they weren't too happy i guess with the previous owner and there's issues mm -hmm. that are continuing so we're dealing with all that yeah. it is stressful at times you know but i think it's going to be worth it once this is all done yeah i mean that's fantastic because your net investment at that point um it's low you're let's see here uh, you're going to be in for like 75 grand <laughs> if, if that all works yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, that's that's great. Like that, yeah. we, we were projecting that we're, we were going to be in it for more because yeah. we were projecting a higher rate at the time when we were yeah. uh, doing the underwriting. So we were okay with that. I know it's not like it was back in 2021 or 2020 when everything was a perfect bird. Well, you're over 100% ROI. Yeah, so, I exactly. mean, yeah. but that's not factoring in your time. That's just on the nominal dollars yeah. left in. Yeah. Uh, of course, like you're not paying yourself a salary in this, are you? I'm not paying a salary. No, I'm not taking anything for managing. I'm just, just yeah. doing it. Yeah. And that's tough to sustain over the long run, right? Like yeah. eventually I feel like you do enough of those kind of projects, you kind of burn out on that. Well, I mean, it depends on how much um, equity you're getting, right? If, if you're getting I know, it's the like carrot. 80%, like that's a, a different story yeah. than getting 50% equity, right? Yeah, so your split is more in favor of you for doing the work. Uh, in this case, yes, a little bit, but um, yeah. it's it was more like I always wanted to own a building and... Mm. Um, it was an opportunity to do that. So I, I am sacrificing a little bit to get there, but I'm, I'm happy just to learn and yeah, get like all that the experience, experience. Yeah, the experience piece. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's worth it. It's worth, you know, going into that, that first one and then you grow from there. And it's a huge relief knowing that whether you have like two or three vacant units, you're still okay. Like mm -hmm. you're not stressing about the, the cash flow so much because there is enough to, to sustain. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, I guess 
I guess the real elephant in the room is Ontario investing right now. Yeah. And the landlord tenant board and everybody flocking away and you're still focused here. And um, I actually think that there's a lot of positives to that because of everyone else kind of going looking elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? I agree. I think the the owner actually probably sold it because of that exact reason. Yeah. I think he was just really tired of dealing with the problems and tenants, yeah. all that. So I got a good deal on it. I got a really good VTB on it. So I think if you're willing to take on the stress of dealing with this sort of situation, you're going to do well, but it's, it's not easy, like for sure. Yeah. And, um, sometimes I, I do question whether I should be looking elsewhere just to make my life easier. But I think for now I'm, yeah. I'm still happy with the results. Yeah. I mean, like Ontario is that wild card in that, like the, the long-term outlook with such short supply of housing, like seems to indicate that whether it be a combination of just higher rents and higher values or just higher rents or higher values, like that all should be coming in mm -hmm. theory because of the number of people coming into the country, unless immigration you know, yeah. significantly yeah. changes. So for that reason, I think it'd be cool to own a few things here, but then, you know, the flip side of that is of course, dealing with the LTB, there's nothing to stop you from becoming an expert in the LTB and knowing all your farms i had uh i had james fernandez on the show and out of like 80 some odd units he owns 15 weren't paying yeah <laughs> so yeah. so he was becoming somewhat of an expert in all the forms sure. and everything sure. to do and i guess if if you kind of make yourself that that expert then you turn what everybody else is afraid of into an opportunity yeah but there there's also certain things that i had i hadn't come across you always come across something mm -hmm. new like in this case we had that that one unit that um, was in the process kind of, a, of, a, of an eviction, mm -hmm. she was able to adjourn a hearing mm -hmm. from a few months ago. And we got to the next hearing mm -hmm. and she was able to get it adjourned again because she had a paralegal, I guess, who really understood the system well and was able to play it into her favor. So we had a three hour time slot mm -hmm. and basically they, they used that three hours to bring up maintenance issues. And so like, as if the tenant had a right to just not pay you because of maintenance issues. No, but the the tenant technically has a right to share all the maintenance issues mm -hmm. during the hearing. And if her time slot or our time slot ends before she's had a chance to present all of her information, <laughs> then they have to adjourn it. Oh man. Right? That's so, slimy. Yeah. So um that's that's kind of the situation that we were in for that. Um something you learned. So the hearing right? went by, didn't get a resolve, like nothing happened. So what happens then? They reschedule another one? Yep. And that for could when? be six months, eight months. Oh, so you just go back to the end of the queue. Pretty much. Yeah. You have to be kidding me. <laughs> yep. So um, that was an interesting situation. And by the way, I didn't say a single word. My paralegal didn't say a single word for three hours during that hearing. It was just the tenant's paralegal. Just the tenant, yeah. No, the tenant and, and the paralegal. Yeah. It was a three hour hearing. Yeah. And you yeah. couldn't get everything out. Not, no. So and what she, it be? she probably has another like six hours, to be honest, like she could share another six hours worth yeah. of content. Does this person talk to you? Like, will she talk yeah, to you? Yeah. So when you guys talk, like, what's her scenario? Like, is she, is she at all worried about the fact that regardless of what happens at LTB, you're still going to be coming after her for the money? I mean, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know what her expectations are, but I think that her paralegal is well informed of tenant rights and they, they kind of, mm. they're playing the system really well. So. And they can play that game all they want. But mm -hmm. my point of reasoning with a tenant would be, look, I get you got to do what you got to do. But at the end of the day, here's what I got to do. So say you go a year, that's like what, $20,000 in rent or, yeah. you know, not, not that much, what, 12,000, whatever the rent is. Well, just because you didn't pay it doesn't mean you don't owe it. Yeah. And hey, yeah. how do you like your credit? Well, if you get a judgment on your credit, it will never go away unless you file bankruptcy, consumer yeah. proposal, potentially. Um, so you literally down the road, you'll end up paying it anyway. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it make more sense for us to just work this out now? And rather than us go through legal fees and all that stuff and, yeah. and have to do that, like, you know, why don't we just work this out? You know, like I've, I've tried, I've yeah. tried that, but I think if for her, it's more of a personal issue with the previous owner. Yeah. That's and tough. Yeah. So she like, I think to her, it's more like, I want to do what's right because I want the previous landlord to pay for what, for what he's done or that sort of thing. But he's no longer involved. I know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I know not everybody's logical about that stuff. So yeah. it, it is what it is. And, um, not trying to like simplify it. Cause I know it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are the kind of situations you yeah. run into. 
I still want to, if possible, work something out with the tenant. I mm-hmm. want everyone to sort of be happy. Yeah. Um, but like come up with a fair solution. Yeah. Like don't yeah. be unreasonable. I, I've always found that if you just approach it and I like, I make a point of saying it, Hey, I'll always be reasonable about mm-hmm. all this. Yeah. You know, I'm, I want to hear your side of things. I want to, you know, I'll be reasonable. Yeah. And I feel like that, like, Oh, okay. Yeah. He'll be reasonable. It would take yeah. some like serious changes to, um, make things more even in the landlord tenant board. Right. Like, oh yeah. But they're not interested but, but in that yeah, it's, right it's, now. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. So I think you just, as a landlord in Ontario, you just have to be very careful. Um, make sure you get mm-hmm. the right advice from, from people. Yeah. Um, like how many times have we seen somebody fill out a form incorrectly representing themselves um, at a hearing and mm-hmm. their case gets dismissed or whatever. Right. And yeah. it's just not worth it. Like spend the 700 bucks or thousand bucks or whatever to hire a paralegal and get things done. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's a valid point. So, you, so you're is this the first time you've had to deal with with uh, LTB? No, no, I've had to deal with LTB from like the first property I bought. Oh yeah, so you. Were, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, I I got into the student rentals and I I was blessed. Like, you know, you just yeah. don't have those kind of issues. You have other issues, but not that kind of issue. Mm-hmm. They're they're all like, oh, don't call my mom. Don't call yeah, my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, actually, I've had similar situations. Mm-hmm. So I have. Uh, there, there, it's not a student rental per se, but mm-hmm. there were students in, in a basement unit that I had mm-hmm. and they were pretty good. Like they were kind of difficult to deal with, but any, um, any sort of damage to the unit, they were able to, to repair it. Um, yeah. so it was good. Like their parents got involved. The dad, one of the dads came, he patched the hole and did all oh, yeah? that. So it was pretty, pretty good. Cool. Yeah. 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 Stu- students are, are good. They can be, they can be tough though too. All right. So talk to me about your plan for going forward, the overall big picture, like what it is, what it is you're trying to accomplish. Um, for this year, the main, the main thing is just to stabilize everything. Mm -hmm. So we've got like those townhomes in Welland, they were, they were bleeding pretty heavily because we had legacy tenants there that, um, weren't willing to leave for a long time, but thankfully we were able to negotiate with them. We had to file an N13 for renovations because we were converting them to duplexes. So we just got that all resolved recently. So when you did that, like they're under the assumption they get a, they get an opportunity to come back, right? Uh, yes, but when we so two of them actually went all the way up to the hearing two for the N thirteen. Yeah, they wouldn't leave. N- no, like they they wanted to get to the hearing to see what they would decide there. Got gotcha. two of them. We were able to uh, settle with them before the hearing, out of the four. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when we got to the hearing, um, the paralegal that I was working with actually negotiated with them to pay them a certain amount and have them basically find another. Yeah, one. yeah. So, um, yeah. So we're we're working on those. We're we're gonna be able to lift the rent from let's say eleven hundred a month to once converted to about twenty six hundred a month between the two units. Which is gonna be okay. a huge help for us. Yeah, that's big. So you're you're over ten thousand across the four buildings. Yeah, or the four. Yeah, existing units. Hopefully over ten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and then you'll be at, in for how much? The the conversion's going to cost about seventy grand per yeah. unit. And then you bought it for three seventy five. You said per yeah. unit. What's that work out to be seven at four point four, four, four? So you're under two million all in. Yeah, for right? you're gonna technically one point eight. One point eight million in on ten thousand dollars a month in rent. Yeah, if you want to yeah. look at it that way. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking like one percent rule. You're not quite there. Yeah, uh, yeah. you're you're doing all right now. Will you will you cash flow at today's interest rates with a conventional mortgage? Um, it's gonna kind of break even with a conventional, but again, mm. the idea, CMHC. CMHC across yeah. all four, right? Yeah, I'm doing quick math in my head. These are just shortcuts based on things I've calculated before. Okay, so, and and again, if we have a little bit of money left after we refi, mm-hmm. you know, we don't get the full eighty percent loan to value, whatever. I think we're mm-hmm. okay with that. We, it's going to be a lot better than the situation yeah. we're in now. So we've just had to adjust. Like nobody expected a 5% increase in rates and in, within a year or whatever amount of time. No, right? Especially with such a trustworthy guy like Tiff Macklem <laughs> saying that you would have, and what do you say until like late 2023 before they would re- increase rates? I don't know if it was yeah. 2023 or 2024. It was definitely 2023. At Like, I just don't know what he said specifically. He's like, yeah. oh, rates are going to be low for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the old well, honeypot. Well, it, it, I think it was a good lesson for a lot of us, mm-hmm. like myself included. I, I just know never trust the government. Just, well, <laughs> yeah, but also like just make sure you're aware of what your portfolio is going to look like if the rates do yeah. increase substantially. Yeah, because it, it's never real until it happens, right? Yeah. Like, 
And no one in our like generation of real estate investors really had any experience with a down market, right? Yeah. Like it had been a growing market, a, a bull market since 2000 and like what, eight? nine yeah, like yeah, after the fall then it really hadn't significantly corrected not in a meaningful yeah. way yeah. uh and now we're seeing it right so you had to learn where it's like i'd interview people from out west where where oh eight hurt like and they still never recovered those mm -hmm. values they, like and they had a very different mentality because yeah. they knew oh well, you guys don't realize that it's real like <laughs> it can really yeah. happen yeah well, I remember, so I, I go to uh, Durham REI, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with. Yeah, Quentin yeah. D'Souza. I've never been, but I, I'm familiar yeah. with Quentin. So um, yeah. he would always say to us at the meetings, and this was like 2018, 2019, I want you to stress test your portfolio. Add like 4%, 5%, see what, what your portfolio is going to look like then. And at that time, I always thought that's never going to happen. There's no point, whatever. Yeah. But it did happen. And it's a good exercise to do, even yeah. when rates are low, like just see what would happen in that case. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have uh, expected that much uh, myself. Like I, I talked about, Hey, make sure like you can't be riding the line. Cause what if interest rates go up, but man, that, yeah. uh, that definitely changed things. Of course, you know, an offsetting effect is rents got pushed up too. So it, it yeah. offset some of the negative effect. I think it did, but not to me, not, not the full. so much on the outskirts, like in Welland, St. Catharines, Brantford. You don't feel that rents got pushed up as much? Not as much like That's Toronto fair. for sure. But mm -hmm. even when I look at my units, like I've had units turn over the last two years and the rents haven't gone up that much. So, really? yeah, I, I mean, in my experience, but I'm also very picky mm -hmm. when it comes to tenants. Like who you'll take. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I'm assuming that's based on experience. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your, what's your process to be picky? Like how, how do you weed people out? Um, well, first of all, one thing I learned is that I always want to meet the tenants before I sign anything. So I do a video call. Because yeah. I have a property manager that fills okay, so it, you right? let them do all that. But they do you, everything. Yeah. And in the past, I've just like trusted the property manager, and then yeah, I've done that too. It's next a mistake. thing, next thing you know, like you don't get along with the tenants, mm -hmm. and there's just a problem. So always do a video call. That's one. I ask a bunch of questions on that mm -hmm. video call. Yeah. And then with the best tool, by far that I that I've been using is Rentify. Rentify. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, so that for anyone who's listening who doesn't know, basically connects to the tenant's bank account through a secured platform. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a third-party software, and it basically reveals their finances for the last like year or so. So you okay. can see how much money they have in savings. Um, yeah. Have they paid the rent on time in the past? Like it, it's going to see if it's coming out on the first or if it's been going. It'll on the show first. you, yeah, like e-transfers, yeah. whatever, right? You can see it's all categorized. And the tenants agree to this? They do, but oh, so this is the thing. When I just tell the property manager to ask them, I was getting like a, I don't know, 80% no rate, sort of like they don't mm -hmm. accept, right? But when I do this video call and I explain it to them, I'd say like 90% of people say yes. How do you phrase it? Pretty much exactly what I just said, that it's it's a third-party software, connects um, to your bank account through a secured platform and just allows me to verify your income, your past rent payments. Mm -hmm. uh, would you guys be okay filling out this application? Really? And they just say, oh, okay. A lot well, of I think I think a lot of them, you know, the demand, they want the unit, right? And when you ask people something when they want the unit, it's like the best time yeah. to get them to agree to things. Like for one of the things I'll, I'll say, you know, I used to say in the, uh, the intro is like, I collect rent using direct withdrawal. Yeah. That's what I do with my tenants. Is mm -hmm. that is that okay with you guys? Yeah. And this is before we agree to any lease and they've already given their agreement. Okay, well, as we discussed, this is how we're doing rent mm -hmm. and it's right in the lease. Now, of course, I have, I've had one tenant uh, change midway. It, it said yeah. it was causing them problems. Yeah. But, uh, you know, generally speaking, it's a great way and simplifies your life, right? From 100%. a management sta standpoint. I do the exact same thing, by the way. Yeah. I ask for a pre-authorized debit um, on the video call. Yeah. So I try to get like all the tough questions out. Yeah. Face like you to ask face. it because you're not telling them that they're getting the place. You're just asking them the questions. Oh, well, this is how I do it. Mm -hmm. And then they can, they can decide whether uh, you can still decide not to have them. Right. Yeah. So I think they kind of subtly, and you don't have to say it, but they subtly get, oh, I, I guess I better be agreeable. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's true. And then yeah. also there are times when the tenants, um, they just change their mind after the video call. And I think a lot of times it's just because they don't feel like they, they're going to get along with me or they don't yeah, like the way I'm okay. doing things. And I'm yeah. perfectly fine with that. I'd rather figure that out early on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to get into it because you're, you're in the thick of it. You're self-managing. You're going to LTV constantly, it sounds like. 
I mean, not if, that, if you were not emotional, often, if you were emotional about it, you would already be out of this. Like hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It's hard. Like mm -hmm. there, there's been countless times that tenants have yelled at me. Um, just they're, they're really upset. They think I'm like the greediest, worst person. Oh in the yeah. World. You're always, see, that's the thing I hate about being an Ontario landlord is like, you are always the bad guy. Yeah. Unless you're a student rental landlord, then you're okay. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're a bad guy to them because you're making them have to change something. They've yeah. been living there for 10 years, uh, yeah. 15 years. And all of a sudden you're saying, well, I want to do things differently and yeah. I need you to relocate to find a new home. Yeah. Well, no, this is my home. I don't want to move. Yeah. Right? It's like, yeah, you're the bad guy because you're, you're making, oh, forcing 100%. me to do something I, I don't want to do. Right. Uh, it's agree. understandable to a certain extent. Oh, I, but, I totally think it's a, it's understandable. Yeah. It's, but, but at the same time, like I try to be kind, I'm mm -hmm. not trying to just yeah. kick you. I'm not being same. greedy. I just, mm -hmm. I need to do this. I need to convert this property. I need yeah. to make these changes to improve the building or whatever the case is. So my, uh, my media guy, uh, Artem, he, uh, he put out a clip of me talking with my Uthava about, um, getting tenants out and the incentive needed. And, you know, of course, anytime a, a clip like that goes out, you know, people get, there are the bleeding hearts that uh, will tell me I'm an animal <laughs> <laughs> and it happens sure enough. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? I actually don't, I don't like putting those out out of context. Cause sometimes when I talk about this, I sound like I'm like heartless or something. Like I just get the macro situation. Like if if one side agrees to pay for something, but then changes their mind or, or it's not working for the other side, you know, between people dealing with people, you should be able to renegotiate. If it doesn't work with one side, why are we forcing that? Mm -hmm. The challenge is it's somebody's home. It's become their home. And it's, yeah, it's obviously like the system's broken. The whole, the whole yeah. system, as you pointed out, like it would take a lot for things to be even in well, Ontario. You know what? The, I think the, uh, a big problem here is that there isn't enough there aren't enough options for, for people, for tenants. Mm -hmm. 100%. So if they had more options and it wasn't so hard to find another place that's kind of comparable to theirs, yeah. then we, we wouldn't have these problems. And that's partly because of rent control and the yeah. lack of supply. Yeah, rent control, because what happens with rent control is you've got you know a handful of tenants paying nothing, next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And because of they're, they're paying so little, the landlords need to get so much more out of all the newly rented units. That's part of it. Uh, like you could find countless uh, examples where there's places with rent control with lower rents, lower average rents. And yeah. then when rent control comes in, it actually makes things worse. Yeah. So it's not, um, it never actually has the effect, but that's like all government interventions. Like the, it always does the opposite of what it's intended to do. So, yeah, it's, it, I don't know what it would take to change mm -hmm. the system, but it doesn't seem like the Ontario system is going to change. I'd say soon. like just making it entirely uh, agreement, private agreement between two parties would almost certainly have an effect of lowering average rent across Ontario. Like yeah, in yeah. two years time, if, if we removed all landlord tenant board and now it's just the agreement, it's whatever the landlord and the tenant agree, yeah. no, no outside intervention. I bet you within two years, the average rent in Ontario would have fallen significantly yeah. and of because course, a whole bunch of people would want to come in and, Oh, it's a fair landscape now. Like look at a place like Alberta, like rents will actually go down $400. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, the market adjusted. We're lowering your rent this year. Yeah. Yeah. Like when's that ever going to happen in Ontario? Yeah, for sure. That's, it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense. It doesn't yeah. happen, but I think you would see it if, if it was just an, an unregulated market. That's yeah. my theory. You know, obviously we could poke holes in it and, well, and well, open it like up you for said, discussion. You're going to have with, with a rent controlled market, I think you're going to have a lot of people that are way below market rent. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have people that are paying so much more. Um, yeah. Because they're, they're paying like current rent. There is a smaller supply because a lot yeah. of the people that are paying less rent are taking up a lot of the supply. So if you do remove that rent control, then the the lower rents are going to come up and the higher rents are probably going to come down a little yeah. bit to a, a lower yeah, it'll average. Yeah, normalize. Like yeah. think about how many people, would, you know, they've got a you know, potential for a backyard unit, but they're not really that incentivized to be a landlord in Ontario. Like there's yeah. a lot of people who have heard the horror stories, but now all of a sudden, oh, well, all that's gone now. And now it's a fair market. Oh, really? Okay. We're going to rent out that back unit. You know what I mean? Like it mm -hmm. would change... It would change the sentiment about yeah, it. Yeah, and also if if the landlord and tenant board kind of got their things mm -hmm. together a little bit more and you didn't have to wait six months, eight months for a hearing, yeah. that sort of thing, like that would change things a lot. You, you wouldn't have to be as selective, mm -hmm. right? If if you knew a tenant mm -hmm. that wasn't paying would be out within six weeks or you yeah, know, whatever, you could like, proceed with you confidence. You can pick anyone and and not have any problems. Well, don't... think about all the like the, the Canadians right now that are talking about going to Ohio and Florida and, and Texas because, oh, it's landlord friendly. Yeah. I'd like to be a landlord there. Yeah, yeah. 
you're, you're going to go in and you're going to add rental stock. You know, yeah. you might buy a home, you're going to add it to the rental market. You might build, build units, develop units because mm-hmm. you like that market. Yeah. But with that said, for anyone who is investing in Ontario, you just factor in these possibilities, I agree. right? And I agree. you put that in your budget. And it's you in say, your hazard pay. Yeah. You got, so. you got to, you got to adjust your deal to, to compensate yourself for that risk. I think yeah. people are sleeping on Ontario. Little, you know, I, I see the sentiment changing a little bit. People are, are hearing about rate drops and, you know, getting excited. But in general, a lot of people are focused outside of Ontario, which creates an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And anything that's hard, um, a lot of people shy away from it. So if it's hard to deal with a landlord tenant board, if you become an expert in dealing with them, you stand to benefit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like that, like across everything in life, <laughs> yeah. almost. Yeah. I'm not going to give a golden rule there, but yeah, it's, it's pretty common. And are, you, are you coming across a lot of people today that are still investing? Or do you find that like a lot of people are just kind of on the sidelines waiting to see what happens? That's tough. I, I would say a lot of the people I know are like, you know, there, there's a lot that are like just trying to figure out how to, you know, make their dollars and cents match yeah. and, 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 you know, cover their bases. I've, I've asked people to come on the show. They're like, ah, yeah, I'm getting my shit in order right now. Yeah. Maybe next year. Um, like I'm getting that kind of response from some people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do find that there are people investing here and there, not as much as I, I want. I just had a guy on last week who's um, he is investing in Kelowna and in Calgary and monstrous cash flow. Mm-hmm. Like he's doing burrs, he's doing like creative negotiations and stuff. Really inspiring episode. Like it is still a thing, but my my thought on all of this is it's now become sophisticated or get out of the market. Mm-hmm. That, that's your options now because you used to be able to just buy something and it would go off in value and you could be not good or only okay sophistication. Mm-hmm. Now that's not going to work. So you're either going to have to partner with people who are really sophisticated or you become really sophisticated or build out a team that's sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But discernment and sophistication are going to be the keys to the future and creativity. And it doesn't mean you have to be sophisticated in everything. Maybe you're the expert in off-market deals. You're just somebody who's great at getting off-market. And that's how you win. You you build enough equity in just on your buy price. Mm -hmm. And then other people will be experts at dealing with heritage, experts at being, you know, dealing with uh, site plan and um, other specific things that a lot of people shy away from yeah, and you yeah. win that way. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I just think like it used to be everybody and their uncle knew somebody uh, mm-hmm. who had made hundreds of thousands of dollars on pre-construction or whatever. And they all wanted to get into the game and now it's like not sexy. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of frustrating for content makers like us because <laughs> our audience kind of shrunk. <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, like the people who are still sticking around are more serious. So yeah. there's a silver lining to everything. Yeah. And I think like right now, or actually at any point, it's good as a, as an investor, real estate investor to understand a little bit about everything, like understand about, um, construction and the law, like the landlord tenant act a little bit, that sort of stuff, but you don't have to be an expert in everything. Well, I'll give you a scenario though. Like say you're a guy like James Fernandez who knows every single form, like how to use them. Like you've mastered it. You will now go and negotiate for properties that are are an absolute headache for a landlord who doesn't know what he's doing with his mm-hmm. tenants. And that landlord will will just be like, please take the keys. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'll be able to negotiate a deal that's so favorable for you and a win for him mm-hmm. or her. And like that then that happens because of your level of sophistication at dealing with one specific thing. Yeah. Well, it is hard, like dealing dealing with these matters when you you have to go to the landlord tenant board. You have to deal with tenants that are yelling at you. Mm-hmm. It's not easy, and not everyone wants to do it. For sure, but if you're not emotional about it, and you still have money in the bank to cover yeah. the negative cash flow, or, or you know, if you if you were literally went into the deal expecting that some people weren't going to pay you for yeah. multiple years, if you went in with that mindset and they paid you after twelve months, you'd be like, oh sweet, I'm getting a check already. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Versus the one going in saying, oh, I need to get that check. I spent every last dollar to acquire this yeah. building. Yeah. It was it was the the plan at the onset that made that a good or a bad investment right, right. to a degree. I mean, obviously there were fundamentals that had to be there yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, but if people just adjusted the way they did it. And for me, like when I went into like, when things became a lot more comfortable in investing, obviously cash flow was there, mm-hmm. but I was also starting to realize the more cash I had in the account for each property, the less I worried about it. Yeah. And for like, sure. it's, it was way more worth it to me to just leave the cash there or let it accumulate yeah. than use it and now have to start thinking, well, what would I do if, mm-hmm. yeah. So, well, when you're brand new and you're, you're getting your first property, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. 
Mm. You're, you can read all sorts of books, listen to all sorts of podcasts, but you're still going to make a ton of mistakes. So yeah, just got to figure out a way to get through it and make the best. Well, out make of the small mistakes too, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. partner in with somebody, learn from stories too. I find I learn from stories. So if I can in, like sort of a, embody somebody's story and like feel that pain of like making the mistake, then maybe I can avoid it too. Yeah. <laughs> or I can relate it to a pain I've already experienced, but you know, you can learn from, they say, mistakes and mentors, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, the mentors can be in the form of podcasts, books, coaching, whatever. But, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, I would prefer not to go out and make every mistake out there because I've already made more than a few. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we, we all, we've yeah. all made mistakes. But like you said, make sure your mistakes are not ones that are going to ruin yeah. your whole idea about investing and make you never want right. to do it again. Like, for instance, like I'm mailing out off-market uh, offers in, in Florida and... I'm kind of going a little bit outside my initial parameters for like an offer range in terms of like the hotness of a market when we're looking at number of sales versus number of actively listed properties. And I'm getting a little more aggressive in in who I'll mail and who I'll send to. And that may prove to be a mistake, but if it is, it only cost me a few thousand dollars, Mm -hmm. you know, $10,000 maybe. And I probably, I'll make something from it. It might not be as profitable, but I won't know unless I test. So there's an example of what could be deemed a mistake, but it's more testing something. Yeah. Yeah for myself and I'll learn because of it yeah, it's and it's mitigated loss, right? I, I, I'm, I'm covering my downside. I can only lose so much on it and I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah. And I have like, I have students who are, who are uh, coaching students who are deciding to get into Airbnb arbitrage and, and they were having trouble making the decision. And I said, okay, well, what do you think you'll spend? Oh, 10, well, maybe, well, maybe 15, like in a worst case. Okay. Yeah. That's the worst case. Okay. Well, would you spend that on education? Well, people go to university, they pay how much? Mm-hmm. So if you learn, you know, $15,000 of education from from that experiment and you still have salvage value you can resell the furniture and now you can take what you learned and, and improve upon it isn't that worth it mm-hmm. and that was just reframing the actual opportunity and then all of a sudden they're like yeah that really helped for sure yeah <laughs> you know, looking at it that way now I feel comfortable with it mm-hmm. right yes I could lose 15 it's not likely but if you're okay with that downside and now you know you can just proceed and, and do your best to make it work then for some people that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the nice thing about, um, kind of taking, taking action. You're, you, you will make mistakes. Like I've, I've made the mistake of overspending on renovations a bunch of times and probably the same. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's taught me a good lesson, like moving forward. Now I know, like, like mm-hmm. I said, I don't care to have the prettiest unit in the world in Brantford yeah. because you, it's not it Toronto. Pay you. It wouldn't pay you. Yeah. And Brantford's just not that kind of market. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm so, sure there are some places where you could do better with, with a nicer unit, but is it necessary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends how much more rent am I going to get? Like I, I try to just look at it that way. So you wouldn't stay yourself in one of these units? Um, I, I mean, I have a kid and like, you know, I don't think my wife would want that. So <laughs> I would probably not. Um, yeah, so you wouldn't but, take your kid But there. I don't think she would like, she would move into a unit like that in Toronto either. Yeah. You know? she, she wants a house, right? Yeah. So it's a little oh, it's different. A uh, he's two. Two? Yeah. Oh, so we had kids at the same time? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, we must have talked about yeah, this. Well, yeah. congrats. Yeah, thanks. So you're you're sleeping now? Or? Yeah, I, I mean, I've been sleeping for a while. He's he's a good sleeper. He's oh, been... my son's not. No? <laughs> I, I don't know. He like, kicked me awake. He still uh, comes into our bed like halfway through the night. Is he two? Two, yeah. yeah. He just turned two. So he gets out, out of his bed or crib yeah, or whatever? Yeah, so he has a floor bed and he just... He'll just make a lot of noise until I come in there and get him. Oh, he yeah. could. He could totally walk in, but he's just so used to from back in the crib days, me picking him up out of the crib. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. he just sits there and holds his arms out. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, and then we bring him into the bed and uh, my wife still likes it. Like, we still like it. Yeah. Uh, having yeah. him in the bed, but I, I my, my sleep would like it if he would not. And then, of course, he wakes up at... Uh, 5 30 after kicking me for an hour yeah yeah so that's yeah we have early mornings too but yeah uh, we're we're lucky he's good he just sleeps through the night for the most part that's wonderful yeah you'll have to teach me your secret yeah i think we're kind of like a, a weird story i think you know every kid's different right and like we just happen to get one that likes to wake up early and mm-hmm. wants to sleep in her bed but i'm sure that we'll we'll work that out uh, eventually mm-hmm. um Tell uh tell our audience here about like your podcast and and what you do outside of real estate investing uh, yeah, so it's the well-off podcast. So I've had Andrew on, but it was actually a while ago. I should probably have you on again. Uh, but yeah, it. I do s- s- very similar thing. I-, I get a lot of different people. Um, I like to hear mm-hmm. about different strategies and uh, just have a conversation sort of like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah conversation is the way to go. Yeah, Never know where we're going to go with it. And I, maybe some people like that. <laughs> maybe yeah. some people don't. <laughs> yeah. I guess if they're here, they probably like it. Yeah. Um, 
And then you're, so you're a realtor by trade. How long have you been doing that? Uh, 10 years, actually 20, actually, yeah. 2013, end of 2013, I got licensed. Wow. I didn't realize it'd been that long. Yeah. So I haven't been, um, selling as actively because I've been really focused on like dealing with, with the stuff in our portfolio. But yeah. I think moving forward, like I, I'd like to focus on apartment buildings. Yeah. So if anyone is looking for that sort of opportunity, I'm happy to run numbers, um, yeah. work on those types of things. And I, I do have some pretty decent connections at this point, I'd say like yeah. that building that we bought was through another agent, which was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's the focus. Nice. And what, uh, what brokerage are you with as a realtor? With Keller Williams. Keller Williams? Yeah. Out of? Keller Williams Legacies out of Vaughn. Vaughn. Okay. Yeah. So you, you moved up there. Is that where your house is in Vaughn? No. So we live in Brampton. Um, but yeah, our, our brokerage, we don't, yeah, that, that's where our brokerage is. I won't Man, go into the whole story. You got a lot of driving. Yeah. Do you drive up there a lot or not really? Uh, to the brokerage? Yeah. So we, we moved into a new office. It's been closed like the last two months or so. Yeah. So we haven't been able to use it. I do work from home most of the time, but I do like to go yeah. into the office as well. Yeah, I'm like 50-50. I'm here on any day. Obviously, we're recording podcasts. Um, usually Wednesdays, I work from home. Friday's like a floater. I'm doing special projects. If I can work another day from home, I will. But yeah, so maybe two days at home, three mm. days from here. That's kind of a nice balance. Because yeah. if I'm working from home, I can you know just go into the kitchen, get lunch. You know, yeah. I like yeah. all that. And no 25-minute to the office and home. Right. Uh, just when there's traffic, it's like 25 minutes to get home, but uh, otherwise it's 15 minutes to get here. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, yeah, there's like some, there's a nice little balance in there. I definitely think it's, it's important to get out of the house a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I definitely eat more when I'm at home. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'm always like going down there getting a snack or something. So it's not good for that. I've been a chronic snacker and, uh, got a little away from me since having a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of yeah. let things go a little bit. So I'm trying to correct that right now. Yeah. I, I am correcting that right now. I'm not trying. Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyways, cool, man. Where do people, where do people find you? Uh, you can go to welloff.ca. My information's there. Or if you want the podcast, uh, welloff podcast on whatever platform you listen on. Cool. It's a very, uh, easy to remember name. So yeah, good, mm. good choice. And, um, anything else that you would want to just share something, anything we didn't cover? Um, I mean, I think we covered most of the stuff, but I'd say like, just try to find ways at this point. If you are kind of in a tight spot, like find ways to save money. So whether that means adjusting your renovations, um, fighting the uh, designer that's working on your layouts, whatever, like mm -hmm. don't just accept whatever people are telling you to do. Try to find ways to lower your budget because money is pretty expensive now. So yeah. Yeah. yeah like in, in, and to add to that, I would say like, look at what do you own right now that's not performing and consider mm -hmm. maybe, maybe some of that's worth selling. If you have a negative return on equity, and I'm not going to explain the concept right now. I've done that in the past and on other uh, shows, but if you have a negative return on equity on things you own, like people are paying like 14% on private money right now, 15, 16, depending like, mm -hmm. like what could you pay off with equity you have sitting that's poorly performing yeah. that might actually improve your life? It's yeah. something to think about. I'm not saying to do anything or act on that, but I mean, it's well, worth, it's worth knowing about it. The stress of yeah. carrying a lot of debt isn't, yeah. isn't good. So no. like you said, like if you got to sell a property, you know, we're not hoarding properties here. It's not an emotional thing. It's what's yeah. the best thing for my life yeah. and for my vision. Like mm -hmm. you need to have a vision. Why are you owning, why do you want to own these properties? And yeah, make your decisions based on that. For sure. Cool, man. Okay. Well, uh, George, it's always nice uh, talking to you and, uh, you come to the annual golf tournament, so that's yep. nice. Yep. Uh, we'll have to, to get out and play around soon. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me. And now a word from our sponsor, Control and Compound. Infinite banking in under 60 seconds. We've all got to save our money somewhere, and we think that a high cash value life insurance policy is the perfect place to save it. Why? We're going to save our money inside this policy, and it's going to grow tax-free. Down the road, we're going to get hit with an emergency or an opportunity, maybe a chance to buy a business, real estate property, an income-producing asset, and instead of withdrawing from our savings account, we're going to leverage that asset. We're going to borrow the insurance company's money, and we're going to invest in that opportunity. Our money is still inside of that policy compounding uninterrupted tax-free and our money's outside in this investment opportunity. We're going to rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, all while providing a death benefit for our families. Down the road, we're going to retire. Now we retire with a high cash value life insurance policy with a lot of cash. We're going to start taking those policy loans again, but this time we're never going to pay them back. When I say never, I mean we're going to pay them back with the death benefit when we die and our families are going to get left with the rest completely tax-free. 
For more information, visit www.controllingcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines.